Hey folks, I'm going to do a quick video here on a bike fitting technology that I began using a few months back that's really been a game changer for my clients. It's really opened that black box that is the saddle and rider interface. Um, and so I'm going to go over and show you some of the some of the benefits and some of the capabilities of this system. Because so the system is this sleeve that goes over your saddle and it communicates with this Bluetooth system here. Um, and from this, in, we can get all the data that you're gonna see in the upcoming video, so stay tuned. Here's a, um, here's a, this is actually one of the before profiles from a client I had in the last week or two. Um, and you can see they were loading the nose of the saddle quite a bit. Um, and you see this right side where uh, ostensibly the right sit bone is sitting. And this left quadrant here, this blue quadrant, there is no pressure whatsoever. Um, and this is a good example of showing where you are and where you're not loading the saddle. We can determine what part of the pelvis is most loading. So clearly the, the anterior portion of the pelvis, like closer to the pubic bone, is loading here in the front of the saddle, while she does have some uh, loading towards the back of the saddle here, uh, closer to the sit bones. But um, it really gives us a good idea of what part of the pelvis is, is bearing the weight. Another great function of it is we can compare progress before and after. And this is really cool. Here we have on this left side, uh, this is the first recording I took on a client, and on the right side here is not actually the last one where we ended up, but it's close to the last one. You can kind of see the progression of where the weight has shifted. Um, for instance, there was he had a, a fair bit of weight. He was actually bearing some weight in this middle saddle part of the saddle section, and some of that disappeared. We actually still have some on the left side, but he had a lot of transfer in weight back on the saddle, um, and this happened to be a mountain bike in this case. We were able to get his weight a little bit better balanced back here. Now he's just like he was weighting the right side before. He's still weighting the right side and actually even a little bit more. Uh, but he's actually weighting the left side quite a bit more as well. And incidentally, we can tell exactly how much pressure uh, is being weighted. These are, are in millibar, uh, a unit of pressure. But we can change that to millimeters of mercury. We can change that to pounds per square inch, uh, kilopascal, basically um, anything we want. And this is giving us a quantitative measurement, which is great. We're not, it's not just a relative measurement. I really like the fact that we are able to determine how the pelvis itself is moving, what its dynamic motion is like on the saddle. If we look at this, uh, this is a, an early uh, recording from a, from a young athlete I had come in. And it's a little difficult to see, but there's a little red line here. And it's not quite horizontal, but it's pretty close, and you see these black squiggly lines. What those are, basically the center of rotation of the, of the pelvis, essentially. And this, is, this red line is called the angle of regression, where we're actually seeing what direction the pelvis is moving. If we actually go to a different rider and take a look, and we see something like, we'll look at this one here, we can see this red line. The magnitude of the line has changed, so there's more motion, but also the angle has changed drastically. Now we really have a dynamic motion of the pelvis that uh, deviates from this normal, what we would consider reasonably normal lateral motion, right to left, back and forth kind of motion. And this is this one is moving very much from the back right to forward left, which is why they're loading back here and 
up here to some extent. That's why those there was those two uh, load incidences of load. Um, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that we're likely to see significantly different loading patterns, not only just between individuals, but also depending on the type of bike being ridden. This was actually a mountain bike, which is actually a rare, in my experience, has been a kind of a rare pattern for loading. time trial saddle or something like this, something closer to that where there actually is quite a bit more nose pressure. That That's a little bit more typical, especially on a time trial bike or a triathlon bike. This rider is actually a really good example where it becomes critical to know and to be able to tell the difference between very, very small adjustments. In fact, these last two, um, which are you know very, very similar, still have slightly different numbers behind them. What we can do is we're able to compare those two. So we can look at them side to side, uh, but we can get information from them. Some it, Rather than just this visual information, we can actually get an analysis of this. And we can, what this does is it breaks down a lot of different, uh, a lot of different aspects of it. And we can see the max pressure that we're seeing on the pubic bone, on the left sit bone, on the right sit bone, before and after. Um, we can see this is a really nice one I like uh, quite a bit, which is actually the loaded area where this really helps us see some very small changes. And here, you know, the weighted surface area, and this is in square millimeters. Uh, we went from uh, 1,250 on the left sit bone to 575, and everything else stayed mostly the same. The final benefit, as I see it with this system, is that we can really show the client exactly how they're sitting on the saddle and it provides fantastic feedback that they wouldn't be able to get any other way. For example, with these 3D renderings, it becomes real exactly where they're loading and how much when they see those graphs. That's it for now. Thanks for hanging in on this video. I know it was a bit talky, but I think understanding how that technology works and what we can get from it will pay off in the future. I plan to share more real bike fits in the future, and I think I've come up with a couple of good formats to keep those interesting, so look for that soon. Uh, that's it. Thanks again, and like, comment, and subscribe below.